Okay, who's reading first? Okay, so part of the series of walking away from religion and why we don't church. Okay, and we're going to start with Acts 15, and we're going to talk about Acts 15 here as we go. So, Trenton, read 1 through 15. Hold on, 1 through... Certain man, Talk up, please. And a certain man which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. All right, a certain man, certain men, came down from Judea, taught the brethren, and said, Except ye be circumcised. What's circumcision? This, this goes back to the law of Moses where you had to be circumcised under the law to be part of the children of Israel, right? So on the eighth day, a, a boy, child, man, child is circumcised, right? So this is part of that, okay? That's what they're bringing forward is the Old Testament. Now where we find ourselves here is Jesus has come already. He's lived his life. He's went to the cross. He's died and he rose. And he came back to the apostles and, and talked to them and showed him being alive again. So here we are, and now these guys are all trying to figure it out. All right? This is where we find ourselves in Acts 15. All right? And certain brethren, so there was many of these disciples, we'll call them, because it said brethren, and said, except you be circumcised after the banner of who? Moses. But what do they call themselves now? Christians. Do you know why we're not Moseyans? Why we're not Jews? Because we don't follow Moses. Moses is not our leader. Okay? Moses was their leader in the Old Testament. Okay? So he's still trying to bring Moses back. These brethren are trying to bring Moses back when Jesus just came and said, follow me. And when we look at the transfiguration that we talked about last week, right, a couple weeks ago, where there was three there, right, Moses, Elijah, and Jesus, and James, John, and Peter were there, right? And what happened? What did God say? Moses and Elijah disappeared, right? Because the disciples said, hey, should we make three stones or three places to worship, right? And God said, this is my beloved son. This is Jesus. The other two disappeared. This is what you're replaced with. You don't follow them. You follow Jesus, okay? So there we are. All right, let's go on. Two. No small dissension and disputation with them is determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem upon the apostles and elders. Unto the apostles. Unto the apostles and elders about this question. As being bought, brought on their way by the church, they passed through. Venus and Samaria, declaring the conversation of the uh, uh, conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them, but there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying, that it was needful to circumcise them 
and command them to keep the law of Moses. All right, so here we got this again. Now we've got a certain sect or a group of believers that still are holding on to the Pharisaical way, right? All right, and it said that Paul and Barnabas were determined. Uh, there was a small dissension. Uh, that means division, all right, and disputation with them. They determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. What was the question? Whether or not they should be circumcised and follow Moses, right? So that was the question. That was the problem, okay? And they went up to the apostles and the elders, and when they came to Jerusalem, they were received of the church, the group, and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. So they gave them testimonies of what had happened and how God was working, but there rose up a certain sect of the Pharisees, a, a, a portion of the Pharisees, okay, which believed. So they believed Jesus, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of who? Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. Seven. And when there had been much disputing. Or arguing. Peter rose up. So it was Peter that rose up. And said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, and that Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel. All right, stop here. Who was this talking? Who rose up? Peter. Peter. It wasn't Paul. It was Peter. And Peter said... You know that how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth, whose mouth? Peter, he's talking, should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Okay, and God? Eight. And believe. And God, which knoweth the heart, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost. Okay, God gave them the Holy Ghost. Even as he did unto us. So the same way he did us. And put no difference between us. Zero and difference them. between us and them. Go ahead. Purifying their hearts by faith. Purifying their hearts by what? Faith. faith. Not by works. Not by <laughs> baptism. Right? Not by circumcision, right? All right, not by keeping of the law. Go ahead. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples? Okay, go ahead. Which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. Okay, verse 10 is very important here. Now, therefore, or for this cause... Why would you tempt God to put a yoke? What's a yoke? What did we use yokes for? For oxen and horses to guide them, right? To limit them, okay? Why would you limit them? <coughs> Go ahead. Which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. What is he saying here? This is Peter talking, right? And he said, why would you limit them to put a yoke upon them on their necks to guide them and to limit them to the old law? When God gave them the Holy Ghost the same way he did us and made no difference where we have been circumcised, where we have followed the law of Moses, but they haven't, and they don't. So now you want them to go back and follow the law of Moses. You want them to be circumcised, and this will continue to bear me out what I'm saying right now. When they have not been circumcised, and they are not following the law of Moses. He said, but God still gave them 
through faith of their hearts, purifying their hearts. So God accepted them. And what Peter, we know the story about Peter, when God gave him a dream, right? Remember God gave him a dream? And what was that dream all about? Where he's seen four-footed beasts coming down. And, and God said, Peter, slay, kill, slay, and eat, or slay and eat. And Peter said, I'm not eating no unclean thing. And God said, what I've cleaned, don't call unclean. So God was preparing Peter, not Paul, Peter here, that there was going to come a time when the Gentiles was going to be brought into this, that is, the unbelievers, the people that were not a part of God, that Gentiles were going to be called into this, okay? And God was not going to give favor to those that believed in Moses before, but now we come to Jesus, not Moses, all right? Get this. This is very important. And what did he say? Which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. We were not able to bear the yokes or the restraints of the law. We could not even keep the law. Neither could our fathers keep the law. It was imperfect. And if you want to find out more about that, you'll go to Hebrews and you'll see how imperfect it was that the blood of goats and bullocks could not remove sins. But only we are made nigh by the blood of Jesus. All right, so let's go. For we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved. Even as they. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had yeah. wrought among the Gentiles by them. Okay, that all you're supposed to read? Yes. Okay. But we believe that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved. It's through His grace. What is grace? Unmerited. Unmerited, unearned favor. There's nothing you can do to earn it. You paid nothing for it. And God gave it to you anyhow. Then all the multitude kept their silence, right? Mm -hmm. So here we are, and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. So here we go. Now let's go to 13 through 22. Who wants to read 13, 22? Go ahead. Okay. And after they had held their peace. Okay, so after they had listened to Paul and Barnabas tell of what God had done among the Gentiles, right? Mm -hmm. So after they held their peace, what? James answered. James. Now, we just had Peter speaking. Now we got James. Who was James? The brother of? Jesus. Jesus. Who was Peter? The one that Jesus said, upon this rock I'll build my church, right? On this foundation. Okay, go ahead. James answered. Saying. Mm -hmm. Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Listen and adhere to what I'm about to say. Go ahead. Sam Simeon. Simeon had declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. Okay, so God declared that he would use the Gentiles to take out a people for his name. Not Moses. Okay, go on. And to this agree the word of the prophets. And the prophets backs it up. Go ahead. As it is written. Mm -hmm. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David. Okay, so what he's saying, he's gonna, there's going to be a pause here from the Jewish people. He's going to turn to the Gentiles, take out a people for his name. And then he will return and build again the tabernacle of David. But this is not the time of David or the tabernacle of David. 
This is not the time of Moses, right? So here we are. This was what God had said in the prophecies, right? Go ahead. Which is fallen the down. tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. Go ahead. And I, I will build again the woman, the rock, and I will set it up. And then I will set it up, right. Okay, go ahead. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord. Okay. And all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called. Upon the Gentiles, the unbelievers that I'm calling into this thing, right? Those that just got the Holy Ghost, we started out with the chapter here, that on the Holy Ghost or on the Gentiles also, the same Spirit was poured out among them. Okay, go ahead. And upon whom my name is called, and saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. Who doeth all these things. Okay. And was that it? There's more. What are you reading to? 22. Okay, go ahead. No one to God are all his works from the beginning of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them. Which from among, which from among, among the Gentiles are turned to God. Okay, so wherefore my sentence is, or my instruction is, that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. Go ahead. But that we write unto them mm -hmm. that they ab abstain from pollution. Of idols and for fornication and from things strangled and from blood. Mm -hmm. For Moses of old time has not in, blah, 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 hath in, hath in every city them that preached him. Okay, so they there he's basically saying that let's let's just write a letter coming from us and that we're not going to trouble them. But let's give them some commands that they would abstain from pollutions of idols, right? Quit having idols. Tear down your idols, your little knickknacks, your little Mary bobblehead on your dashboard, and your, your little necklaces, and all these things that you put, your rosary beads or whatever you do. Don't put anything before God. That's what he's saying here. So let's just admonish them and tell them ab 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 abstain from idols and from fornication, right? Do the right thing, live your life pure, and from things strangled and from blood. So what is he saying here? Don't be drinking blood. Don't be eating bloody meat. That's, that's what we have to draw a conclusion to here, okay? And you said, for Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him. So Moses is already being preached in every city. What are we talking about here? Jesus, okay? Being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Moses is already a well-established teaching, right? Okay? And it's, it's going on every Sunday or every Saturday in their case. Then pleased it. Go ahead. Okay. Be read. 22. Then pleased oh. it. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, mm -hmm. namely Judas and name Barnabas mm -hmm. and Silas, Barsadus, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. Okay, so. Then pleased it, so they all agreed with James, right? And with the whole church to send chosen men of their company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. Uh, so Barsabbas and Silas, they were, they were some more experienced men, okay, of the brethren. You want to read through 30? Go ahead. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren send greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. 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 
For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying, You must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. Okay, that's a very important one here. They wrote letters after this manner, the apostles and elders and brethren, send greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia, and here was what it said. For as much as we have heard, so we, we're, we're getting word that certain which went out from us troubled you with their words. That we're supposed to be representing what we believe, but they were subverting your souls. They were telling things that wasn't true, saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment. That is not what we believe. And that's not what we are here to tell you now. So that was wrong. Go ahead. It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that you abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication, from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well. Fare ye well. Okay. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch, and when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the letter, the epistle, which when they had read, they rejoiced for the consolation. So the people was, was happy about it. They were excited. And Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. And after they had carried or tarried there a space, after they had spent some time there, they were let go in peace from the brethren unto the apostles. Notwithstanding, it pleased Silas to abide there still. Paul and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. Okay? And some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord, and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them. They departed from them from Paphilia and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Paul and sailed into Cyrus, Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of the Lord. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, Cilicia confirming the churches. All right. So that concludes chapter 15. Now, what did we learn about this? Now, it kind of ends on a sour note, doesn't it? I know it's not. So it ends on a sour note, doesn't it? Because there was some contention, right? Who was the contention with? Who was the contention with? Barnabas and Paul. Barnabas determined to take with him John, whose surname was Mark, but Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them in Pamphylia. Okay. So, here we are. We're having a little spat here. We're having a little uh, who's who situation here. And what you're, what you're actually finding out here is that Paul, and if you're a Bible reader and you continue reading on and read the um, travels of Paul and things like that, although Paul did many things good, Paul seems to have been wanting to take the lead 
and be the leader here. And so this is where the contention came in because Paul said, wait, wait, because Mark decided to, hey, I'm not going to be a part of this or whatever the spat was in Pamphylia. He decided to depart from them because there was some contention there. And now Paul says, I don't think we should take Mark. Because he left us, he decided not to follow us and, and, and just to depart from us. So here's where you find that Paul starts to try to take lead. And if you look in this scripture and what we read, Acts 15, it was Peter who was supposed to, by God, bring this message to the Gentiles. But you will find through the reading of the scriptures that you will find that Paul claims and names himself the preacher to the Gentiles with no apparent authority outside of his own. And you, as you read through here, you find that Paul begins to bring in the religion back to the what we're calling here the church age, right? So that's what we'll be focusing on. We'll be continuing on uh, in later studies about walking away from religion. We're going to see how these things were pushed back in to what Jesus just said, hey, you follow me. You're not, you're not being a Pharisee. You're not being a scribe. You're not being part of the Sanhedrin court. That's not who I am, and you follow me. You're not following Moses anymore. You're going to be a Christian. But now what you'll find, and, and we will bear this out in the Scripture, is that people have become Paulinians in religion. They have transferred from what Jesus said, what Peter said, and Peter said that there were things that were hard to be understood of things that Paul said, a.k.a. interpretation, those things that were hard to be understood, that was hard to believe. Now, two quick notes here is that Paul, we find in the, in the Gospels that Jesus never harmed anyone. And we can go back to Genesis and find that God created. God did not destroy, right? But later on, we find the flood and things like that. But we'll get into that later. But right now, you see that Jesus didn't hurt anyone. He allowed even the demons that were, were afflicting this man for years, where he would tear himself with, with rocks and, and scrape himself because he was demon-possessed. The demons asked to go into the swine, and Jesus allowed them. So if Jesus was going to be mean to anyone, the only finding we see that Jesus did was drove them out of the temple for changing money, right, in the temple. But it didn't say he laid hands on anyone. Matter of fact, when Peter chopped off the ear of these soldiers that wanted to take Jesus, Jesus put the ear back on the soldier, healed him. So where do you find in the scripture that Jesus done anyone wrong? There's coming a time of judgment, and it's not now. And the demons even asked him, is now the time that you come to judge us? And he said, no. Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost, to bind the brokenhearted, right? To bring the captives out of bondage and set them free. That's what Jesus came for. But you will find that Paul states that his conversion was Jesus striking him down off of a horse or a, a camel, whatever it was, on the road to Damascus, blinding him. All my recollection of Jesus was to heal. Jesus made people see, not blinding them. Jesus put hands back on. Jesus restored people. But yet we find Paul, the first time that Jesus ever did something horrible, and then we find later on that Paul caused a man to be blind. And here is what should cause red 
flashing lights when you read these scriptures and say, wait, that's not my Jesus. That's not the Jesus I serve. And if this is what happened to him, something's wrong. But yet this is where religion came from. So anyhow, we're going to end here. Um, and from this, uh, Shane, you want to dismiss us in prayer real quick? Yes. Father God, I just thank you for this Bible study. I just thank you for Dad teaching us the right message to us. I just thank you for keeping our families safe, God. I just thank you for having us all saved and protected, Lord. I just thank you for you having a miracle day, Lord. Thank you for everything you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So here, too, um, in 1940, <coughs> said Paul chose Silas and departed being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God so the brethren how was that word where was that from where are we at 40 and confirm 41 and he went to Syria and to Syria Cilicia, confirming the churches. Yeah, and Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God, and he went through Syria and Cilicia, confirming the churches. So what happened is, then Paul chose Silas, and they departed because Paul didn't want to take Mark. And they're like, okay, well, since there's some problems here, you guys shouldn't be together to get it worked out. So... Again, this is another issue that rather than working out their situation or issues, he walked away. they just walked away. And that doesn't even follow the teachings of later we find that uh, letters from or by or about Paul. So, yes, that, that, that is a problem as well. So, but anyhow... Um, yeah, not a good thing. So, all right, well, we will come back again uh, in days and uh, we'll continue our studies of walking away from religion. And thanks for watching today. <laughs>